what's up guys mr free coiner coming back to you again today hope everyone is doing well and you are taking care of yourselves and of course guys before i get into this i do want to say i'm not a financial advisor i am simply sharing my thoughts and opinions so please only take it as that okay so i have a few things <laughs> very interesting things for you guys I uh, first wanted to start off with this, and it's it's pretty funny how these things actually work out. Uh, so as you can see here, Willy Wonka has pointed out something very, very interesting, guys. And this is a tweet from Mr. Pompliano. Now, personally, the way he was shilling Bitcoin, you would think his bags were overflowing with the stuff but apparently he doesn't buy or sell any tokens now he says here he says I invest in infrastructure and don't buy or sell tokens on the exchanges most people I know are using Binance, Polynex and Bitrix and he is asked what do you mean I invest in infrastructure as in you don't trade but you hold or that you don't hold you just use I guess she was saying just use picks and shovel he says picks and shovels uh, and you and me is the person asking questions they go on to say hmm is there some cognitive uh, cognitive dissonance that you don't hold the asset but you invest in the industry how correlated is the value of the industry to the value of the asset would you guess and pomp says overall industry has the value has value because some assets have value trying to guess which asset will be the winner is full is a fool's game for most instead i invest in hard assets that appreciate in value and drive cash flow as the overall industry grows less upside with higher confidence so all in all guys pompliano is out here talking up bitcoin as if he owns it but he doesn't really own it is it is that amazing or what that is absolutely amazing no, not really. Why is that? Because there are, and this actual tweet came from uh, Jungle Week Inc. want to definitely give him a shout. Uh, but all in all, there are tons of people who are out here shilling this and fudding that, i.e. XRP, and uh, they're being paid to do so. So it's very important to understand who you're following, who you're listening to, because a lot of these folks, they are actually getting paid to do it. Now me, of course, I wish I was getting paid to uh, talk about XRP. By no means is that the case. Uh, in fact, I have a problem. I'm having a problem with uh, even getting YouTube to treat my videos right. So no, I am not getting paid to shill anything. I, I simply believe in the project. And uh, I think XRP is definitely already on its way. Um, I think it's just a matter of, you know, them telling us about it. I, I think we're way behind. We we don't really understand what is happening at this point. All right, so I want to go ahead and get into a couple articles here. Uh, something that um, Tony, uh, let me go ahead. And, Tony, Mr. Tony Valentina. This guy right here is absolutely wild, but he is constantly tweeting very deep information um, you, you really really have to read what he says because I mean seriously guys it, it's it's very very deep um, you know you you kind of got to read between the lines and some of it but in other cases he's very uh, forthcoming or, or very straight to the point so he says here and this is the the article I'm going to get into uh, well anyway they they have two options print money wildly wildly and cause hyperinflation which is a total doom and gloom scenario or wealth creation from a new asset class xrp already pre-allocated pump it high enough to save the system without hyperinflating it this is the transition phase so right here is what that article goes to or that uh, particular link it says blackrock cio the end game is coming and central banks will debase everything to spark inflation so you know typically when you when you read these types of uh articles and you know the titles and whatnot it makes you think one thing but guys to be honest with you what's happening in the background is that 
everything, all of these companies are positioning themselves to work with XRP. It's, I mean, it's happening right here. They, as you saw what Tony was saying, they don't have a choice. It's already in the works. This is the only way that they're going to be able to keep from having this doom and gloom uh, scenario where people are on the streets burning everything down. They don't want that. <laughs> you know, I don't believe they do anyway. So um, just understand, guys, this is already in the works. These companies are already positioned with XRP. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just a matter of uh, probably a little bit of time. They could stretch it out who you know who knows exactly the timelines are are always a problem but the fact of the matter is they're already working with xrp and then moving on here swift reveals new api standard for pre-authorization of funds another company that is already working with xrp don't let anybody tell you otherwise swift and xrp or rather swift and ripple are already working in conjunction with each other they have to this new system, the whole system is going to be on XRP or utilize XRP. That is how things are going to be saved. OK, um, now you can go in and check out these articles there. <clears throat> I don't really want to go through reading all of this stuff, but guys, you know, it, it's it's already happening. All right. So here HSBC processes first blockchain letter of credit using Chinese yuan. All right, so you know China is definitely deep in the uh, deep in the cryptocurrency space. They're in fact creating their own cryptocurrencies. And, and guys, to be honest with you, China is deep everywhere. I mean, they're building uh, ports. They're they're all in the Middle East. They're everywhere. I mean, absolutely everywhere. When I was in uh, when I was in Zimbabwe back in 2008, the last time. There, I mean, I would see Chinese walking around, Chinese people walking around the streets all the time. They were, they were all over the place. It did, at the time, it caused me a little bit of, uh, you know, concern. It was definitely something I took notice of. But the main deal is here, or with that, is that Zimbabwe has a lot of gold. They have millions of tons of gold that have not even been uh, exploited that 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 hasn't even come close to being touched okay we don't nowhere near there's when I was there I, the uh, the <laughs> the amount of gold that some of these people were getting was, is just unbelievable um I mean you wouldn't believe me if I told you but I'll, I'll give you one example I had a property over there and my neighbor who was actively you know at the time and I was I was to actively uh, digging for gold essentially or mining for it he had an area which was extremely deep in his uh, on his property where he was actually getting 100 grams of gold per ton of earth that is absolutely unheard of and that's not even the highest amount that I've heard I'm not even going to say that but compared to uh, different Places like, say, over here in the U.S., there were companies with major operations going on in the U.S., and the yield was only three grams per ton. Now, over here, the most you would really expect is, you know, on a regular basis would be something like, uh, I think, like five grams per ton is the kind of the upper, I think, five to seven grams per ton is the upper range. And this is this is what they call alluvial gold. It's not um, like the nuggets or not alluvial. I'm sorry. They call it uh, in, in over there. They call it reef gold. It's where this particular uh, uh, gold is actually locked in the rocks. And then you have alluvial, which is what you what you mostly see where the uh, people have nuggets of gold. OK, so those you see typically in river basins and things like that. But all in all, guys. Uh, China is in Zimbabwe to get the resources and gold is definitely not by far the only resource they have so I mean <laughs> you might want to keep your eyes on China and seeing you know just check out what they're doing because they are all over the place and definitely don't believe the hype you see on the uh, on the media 
Okay, one last article. One of Pakistan's greatest commercial banks reveals partnership with Ripple. So Pakistan's joining into the game here, partnering with with, with uh, Ripple. Uh, the uh, tweet here says, uh, Faisal Bank introduces a digitally enabled solution for its customers through partnering with Ripple. With this partnership, fast, secure, and convenient cross-border payments can be made. The ceremony was held in uh, Karachi under the leadership of Mr. Yusuf Hossein. Now, what I believe is that they are using X Rapid. Uh, it doesn't say here, but to be honest with you, that's that's what I believe. I mean, they're not held back by any regulations that the U.S. would be uh, dealing with, so uh, or the lack thereof. So I'm pretty sure they're using X Rapid. Uh, and you know, guys, just another company on board to do these cross-border payments and. Uh, increase Ripple or XRP's utility, as well as the adoption that's already happening across the globe. So very exciting times, guys. Um, to be honest with you, it's hard to say when things could happen. It could be any moment. It could be in another year or two. It, it's really hard to say. I personally um, am thinking it's sooner than later. But again, as I've always said, until it actually happens, it's all speculation. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this uh, you found this information entertaining and insightful. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button as well as smash that like button and the post notification button so you know when I have posted again. Until next time. This has been Mr. Free Coiner. Take care of yourselves and God bless.